Hello, my name is Don Cher Tomei, and I'm the Milwaukee Public Museum Curator of Collections and the co-coordinator of the UWM Graduate Certificate Museum Studies Program. Today you will hear from four graduate students and the program who along with their peers developed our newest temporary exhibit, Hugh New, <laughs> An Exploration of Color. Open through March 2016, this exhibit explores how color is seen and the different ways humans have created, interpreted, and been inspired by color. Enjoy. Color is everywhere in our world, but how do we see it? How is it created? This case explores the scientific explanations of how color works in nature. By visiting this case, you will discover that color is not always as it seems. For example, the feathers of this blue jay are composed of a protein called bubble keratin. This protein forms tiny air bubbles that refract light to give the appearance of the blue color that you see. The colors of the things we see in our world also have the ability to change. This happens every autumn when the leaves change, but color of materials like metal can also change. This dagger knife from the Chow dynasty was once a bronze color, but has now changed to this vivid green because of a process called oxidation. For thousands of years, we have been inspired by our vibrant world. To add color to our lives, we have created hues from nature and collected objects that are naturally colorful. While organic color has been replaced with synthetic inks, dyes, and paints, this case investigates naturally colorful animals, plants, and minerals that are still important sources for color. Humans have obtained and created these colors in almost every shade imaginable from the plant world. This mask was made by the Quakutal people of Northwest North America. The Quakutal used charcoal, a common resource, to obtain the stark black color on this mask. Peoples not only harnessed natural objects with inherent beauty, but also used raw materials that required processing to obtain brilliant colors. The beads on this ancient Egyptian necklace were created from a mixture of crushed quartz or sand, calcite lime, and other alkalis. This composite is commonly known as faience and gets its striking blue-green color from the copper or cobalt additives. How have humans unlocked nature's colors to apply them to their world? How did color get transferred from plants or insects into tattoo inks? This case displays the exciting process of how materials are transformed into vivid colors used for dyes, inks, and pigments. Dyeing fabrics is one way of t making textiles colorful, but how are colorful patterns brought into the textiles? A traditional method of applying colorful patterns is called batik. This batik stamp was once used by coating it with wax and pressing the wax to the fabric. After the fabric was later dyed, the artisan could then remove the wax, leaving the pattern. The making of color is not just an ancient craft of faraway cultures. It is made here in Milwaukee as well. This turtle-shaped condiment jar is a painted ceramic made by a student of Susan Frackleton, a local Milwaukee artist in the early 20th century who was known for her blue and gray glazes. As you can see, her students expanded the colors they applied to their creations. They used acrylic paints to detail their charming condiment pot with yellows, oranges, and blues. Colors are often used to communicate complicated ideas and feelings. Sometimes people will use expressions like green with envy or seeing red. Why is it that some brides wear white on their wedding day? This case examines the many meanings of color around the world. Often color has been used to convey power and wealth. Historically in China, bold reds and golds were used as a symbol of these concepts. The colored enamel of this 18th century dragon incense burner would have given it a sense of luxury and prestige. Color also plays a role in religious and spiritual beliefs. To the people of Nepal, the rich blue-green color of turquoise holds deep spiritual meaning. Its color is so treasured by the Nepalese that they use it as a symbol of group identity. Turquoise is prominently used in this colorful bird figurine from Nepal, which dates to approximately 1950 to 1980. 